great and glorious human beings. Elle Copeland here from Rising Tide. And today we're going to talk about the care and feeding of meat computers. This is something that is near and dear to my heart. I, I love sci-fi. I love a little bit of horror. I love, don't love body horror, even though that's kind of what we're doing here. But I love the concept of humans as while somewhat mysterious, not actually that mystical. We're really just quite practical. This is this is kind of some thoughts for you to be keeping in mind uh, as you are taking care of not just a team of technical people, but also uh, spouses and children and friends. Um, if you consider that all humans in your life are actually just computers, um, you know, life actually may turn out to be a little bit better. And we'll talk a little bit more about why that is in a little bit. So uh, the, the main things that we're going to talk about here are how humans are more like computers than you think, how you should standardly, standardly be taking care of yourself and the other humans in your lives. And then we're going to end with cutting edge technologies to help you stay on top of your game as a technical person who just so happens to have to deal with other people. I know it's a shame. It's really, really difficult, but we, uh, we do what we can, don't we? <laughs> so we're going to get started by having you think about three things, um, how you would define them. The first item would be hard skills. And I would assume that uh, most of you have a good grasp on what hard skills are. Hard skills are um, being able to reformat a hard drive. Hard skills are being able to um, uh, take something apart and put it back together again. Hard skills are being able to code or develop a software program. Um, Hard skills are any list of things that allows you to be technically competent and to do your job well. Um, so anyway, so hard skills are in general in our business, what we are paid to do, right? We, we come in and we help people do the things that they don't have the, uh, the, the strength to do on their own. So with that in mind, you probably know what my second question is going to be or what the second thing that we want to define, and that is soft skills. So if hard skills are all of the technical, measurable, practical things uh, that we can complete, we can um, uh, that we get pulled in to do, what are soft skills? Um, I personally take great affront <laughs> at the term soft skills because it almost makes it seem like uh, there's difficult skills and then there's easy skills, right? Like there's, there's the, the, the cutting iron skills and then there's the ironing skills, like housekeeping versus the work. And, um, uh, so we will probably talk about this more later, but soft skills, Um, are often considered the skills that are required socially to engage with uh, a team or with other people. So, um, you know, communication, um, empathy, intuition, scheduling, you know, just kind of, kind of things that kind of sit around the fringes of the hard technical work that we may be doing. Um, so what would we define, <laughs> you're never going to guess what the third word is unless you watch, watch my talk. <laughs> uh, how would you define a folder glue packer? A folder glue packer, I'm not going to, I'm not going to belabor this one. Those are actually machines in one of the industries that I was in. I actually worked at a, a carton folding plant, a print plant where they printed large rolls of paper into soda cartons, they cut them, and then they ran them through a folder gluer packer, uh, which yes, that's actually the real name. And so this machine has one 
<laughs> responsibility. Well, I mean, technically it has three responsibilities and literally it's in the name. So you could probably guess what those responsibilities are. It, it takes a flat piece of cardboard that's already been printed and cut out. That looks like a soda carton and it, it runs it through this machine, folds it, unfolds it, puts glue along the sides, refolds it, and then presses it and packs it into a box. At which point that box gets packed up into another box and gets shipped. So I guess technically it would be a folder glue or folder packer, but you know, we're just gonna, we'll stick, we'll stick with the, uh, the basics here. So this is a folder glue or packer. I became pretty familiar with these when I was working as an intern during, during school, um, in Perry, Georgia. And I learned a lot about ink colors and about technology and how things really are held together with fine thread and not, not the strong industrial backbone that you assume everything is, but it really, it gave me a lot of insight and frankly, respect to our working class men and women who, who are, are, are out there, you know, literally holding these machines together with years of, of knowledge and intuition, the way that they could whisper to these machines was just, just phenomenal. So, um, uh, so this is a folder glue packer and I'll explain why this is important here. And it's, it's to kind of give you some context. So the, the, the industry that I worked in, that was the one thing that they did. Um, I mean, they did beer cartons as well, but they basically, that was their bread and butter. It was printing, cutting, folding, packing, shipping cardboard boxes. So these machines were very, very, very important. And there was probably, I think 27 at the time when I was on the floor there. Um, and so they were, this, this was literally the bread and butter to get this company, to, uh, to their deliverables done. So, so I want to kind of talk about and set the tone for the value of this technology, um, uh, as we talk about humans as technology. So let's just thought dream some up stuff up right now. So how much would it cost to buy a banana, um, regarding where you are and inflation? What could it be? It's a banana, $10, right, Michael? Um, no, maybe maybe uh, 30 cents, maybe a little bit more. Um, how about a laptop? Just, you know, a standard middle of the road laptop, depending on where you are and its specs. Uh, you may have some, some expectations there, but maybe $1,500. Um, a nice camera. What, a, what would a nice camera run you? Um, at the point in time that I made this, about three grand. Uh, a folder glue or packer. So what I just, what I was just describing, it's a very important piece of machinery that this industry is going to have probably 30 of those machines on the floor at any given time. Um, those run about, you know, I guess it's going to, it's going to range if you're getting the, the Cadillac or the Toyota of them, but $250,000 is a fair number for a folder glue or packer. Um, what about a Millennium Falcon? Uh, you know, I know it's not real. I wish it was real. Um, and so, but some people on the internet have kind of done some guesses. So, you know, that may run anywhere from two to $18 billion. So just kind of a, a scope and scale type thing on how much each of these items would cost, just to give you some context as we guess how much maybe a human costs. But I know it probably sounds crass, right? We don't want to uh, talking about how much a human costs is kind of weird, right? Like we're not going to buy human. Those are the old days. We don't do that anymore. But would it surprise you if I told you that there's actually some industries that have a number on a human life? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not kidding with you. Um, there's actually a, a number of industries and depending on which one you go with, it could be, I know you can't see it because of my face down here, but it could be anywhere between two and $10 million on what the value of a human life is. And this, this value is not, um, again, it's not crass. It's actually quite practical. So for example, if someone wants to put in a stop sign or a roundabout or whatever change of flow, there's actually people that come in and do a survey and they say, okay, well, how many, um, lives have been lost at this location? What's the projection for the cost of installing this item? And is it, uh, does the cost weigh out? Are we going to win 
by saving lives in this cost, or is this other cost of, of installing this worth it? And that cost includes not just, um, not like if you were to buy human, but it's, it's literally things like their taxes and the network that they're a part of, you know, the people that they impact. A, a death in, in a community is, is meaningful. And so there's actually a, t a ton of different industries and departments that have different numbers. And, and so if you look at this, the Consumer Product Safety Commission, so people who are looking at recalls on devices or, or stuff like that, they use a figure of 8.7 million. The EPA uses 7.4 million. The Department of Transportation uses $9.6 million per human life to say uh, this is the number that we should be mindful of. This is the risk that we're taking on to put it into a hard number. So let's just, I know it's the high end, but for math reasons, um, uh, let's say that each person in your life is worth $10 million just to make it easy. So just consider that as I ask you this next question. If you count up the people in your life, those that you know intimately, personally, and professionally, what is your network's net worth? So if you consider that, um, you know, uh, there's me, there's my, my sister, my brothers and my parents, um, there's the people that I work with, you know, like I could expand it to my friends. Um, I'm already way, way past 10, but 10 times 10 million is a hundred million dollars worth of people <laughs> in, in my life. And that far surpasses a uh, folder glue or packer. In fact, I have well over 30 people in my life, you know, on the theoretical industrial floor of Al Copeland's life. It's worth much more than um, the devices that are running that multi-million dollar industry that just makes soda carton boxes. So that then begs the question, How do you take care of that number of people in your life? And what should an investment like that require from you with your resources, your time, your energy, your interest? Um, it's a curious question. So if you have many more people in your life than I do, you've got a staff of 20, you are running not just the technology that you guys touch, not just the computers, not just the, the telephony, not just the networks, not just the businesses that you're taking care of, but the people alone are worth the investment and the time of considering how do you take care of them and how do you improve their lives? So that's it for today. Our next session is going to be how exactly humans are like computers. Um, you know, my, my hypothesis is if we practice taking care of people with the same curiosity that we do technology, with the same energy and excitement we do when we have an unboxing video, we hold that same excitement for other people, then what? Even if you don't like that $10 million number, even if you take the lowest end, the $2 million number, how many people are in your network? How many people are in your care? What would an investment look like for that net worth of mm, 20 million, 200 million? What would that require from you, your resources and your time to care and upkeep for those people? You don't have to have any answer right away. We'll actually talk about this more in another session, but hold that, consider it. Are you treating people with that level of care and that respect that you would um, if someone handed you something and said, hmm, here you go, it's $10 million, <laughs> just, just casually, because uh, that's what they do in hospital rooms when they hand you a baby. And there's all those hopes and dreams and future there. Uh, they're going to turn into a worker. They're going to turn into someone who's commu communicating with you, asking for uh, a new monitor when they just haven't plugged theirs into the wall. You know, it's a... Uh, it's pretty wild. But um, thanks for joining me this week. We will talk next week. We'll pick up um, on how humans are like computers. Thanks for joining. I'm Al Copeland from Rising Tide. We'll talk to you soon.